Um, you know, I'll start by certainly complimenting Northwestern State for coming in here and competing and doing the things they did tonight. Um, Coach Thomas has done a great job with that team. I know they've got a lot of upperclassmen. We knew they were going to come in here and they were going to play hard and they were going to compete. And I, I give them a lot of credit for making the plays they had to at the end uh, in order to win, make, to win the game, making the field goals, uh, putting the ball down there in field goal position and making some of those plays. You know, the thing that was probably the most frustrating for us, especially that we came in here at halftime and I think we had about 260 yards to 80 yards and you're in a 13-3 football game. Uh, we just we, we had seven penalties in the first half offensively, really weren't able, I thought defensively, I mean, we'd only given up three points, and I thought we're playing really well defensively. Uh, but offensively, I, I certainly think that we stubbed our toe a number of times. I don't know how many yards and penalties we had, but I know how hard it was every time I looked up to seem like we were in a third and long situation uh, because of penalties. And we went out in the second half. I told everybody at halftime, we just gotta, we got to calm down. we got to execute. we got to eliminate the penalties. Um, we go out there and, you know, you're in a close football game and you turn the ball over three times. And that's the frustrating part, you know. <laughs> Trent Taylor hadn't dropped a punt or muffed a punt since he's been back there. And, you know, for uh, the three games this year and then when he was back there last year. Uh, and he muffs a punt there in the fourth quarter that gives him the opportunity, puts our defense in bad field position, gives him an opportunity to score. Uh, you get the ball, I think that was about with eight minutes to, get, to go. And then we get the ball back with about four minutes. Just going to run out the clock, make a couple first downs, eat it up. Um, we run three running plays. I'd give it to Kenneth again uh, on third and short, third and one. He makes the first down and the ball comes out. The ball comes out, they recover it, and then we started calling timeouts because I wanted the opportunity to run a two-minute drive. We do it almost every day. We practice it all the time. Uh, going down the field, we need a field goal. We had one timeout and a minute to go, which is eternity and a two-minute drive. And, um, you know, he threw the ball out there and it got tipped and uh, the safety kind of redirected right to the safety and he made the play. And then at that point, it was just kind of hoping that uh, we could keep him out of field goal range. And when they got in there, then it was just a matter of trying to uh, trying to force something to happen, whether create a turnover or something like that. And I, I give them credit for making the plays they needed to as a head coach. You know, we tried to do everything we could uh, as a staff to get this football team ready for this game. I thought the players played hard. I thought they competed. We just made way too many mistakes. And I think a big part of that uh, falls on us as coaches, but we, we've got to do a better job. As coaches, we've got to do a better job executing as players, but we had the ball in three of our best players' hands when you talk about Trent Taylor, uh, Cody Sokol, and Kenneth Dixon, and all three times we lost it, which is, which is just really unfortunate. Questions? Do you think at all that any of this was due to the kind of FCS letdown effect? Or do you not believe in that? No, I do. I mean, I believe that that can happen, but I didn't feel like our team came out flat. You know what I mean? I didn't feel like they came out flat. I don't feel like they didn't compete. You know what I mean? Or they laid down and had, like you said, an FCS letdown. You can't turn the ball over five times, especially three times in the fourth quarter you're into the field, and expect to win. And, and when you make, um, when we had the number of penalties and stopped ourselves the number of times we did and didn't execute well enough in the first half, I mean, we put ourselves in a position then where we got to be really good in the fourth in the second half, and we weren't. We had three turnovers in the fourth quarter. I don't think it was an FCS letdown. Our players knew we were in a football game, and I thought they competed hard, but we certainly didn't execute well enough to win tonight. What do you attribute the kind of role reversal in terms of you've been starting slow and finishing strong the past two games? You start really fast, and then it kind of fizzles out from there with ten points in the first six minutes, I think. Yep. Well, and then in the second half, I mean, in the second quarter, penalties got us. Uh, we had a lot of penalties early that stopped a number of drives, which really limited us in the second quarter. Uh, in the third quarter, uh, we didn't have the ball as much because they started with it, you know what I mean, drove the length of the field. But I thought in the, in the really the third quarter, I mean, we took the ball, um, pretty much drove the field. We had one third down we didn't make there where we had a receiver looked at the wrong signal caller and we had a blown route. Um, but outside of that, I thought we kind of executed in the third quarter. Um, so I don't feel like it was, I mean, and then the fumble, you turn it over and you make penalties. It's, I don't mean, a negative. It just it doesn't matter what you do. I mean, it's hard, to, it's hard to move the football when you can't hold on to it. Cody seemed like he was playing well in the first quarter. Then mm -hmm. he got, I think the, the big hit was in the second quarter. Did, it, did, it, did that seem to rattle him at all? 
No, I mean, really, not at all. I said, you all right? And he kind of winked at me and said, yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. I said, you know, we got to make a Liz call. And he goes, no, I got it. I'm, I'm good. I mean, he wasn't rattled. He wasn't shaking. He wasn't, uh, wasn't discombobulated. I thought he threw some great balls through that fourth down ball, you know, where he hit Sterling over there, hit another, hit Sterling on a slant on the backside. Um, you know, he, he threw uh, two of his interceptions, you know, or, well, one of his interceptions, you know, bounced off Paul's hands and bounces up in the air. So, no, I don't, I don't feel like, and he didn't play, you know what I mean? He didn't play. I don't feel like that hit changed his game, so to speak. But well, I guess we just, with drop balls, we probably had more drop balls tonight than we've had all season. Uh, and we definitely had more turnovers tonight than we have in three games combined. I mean, what did we have going into this game? Two? I believe we had two turnovers going into this game, and we had five tonight. I mean, so, I mean, no, I don't, and I didn't feel like he just threw it to them. You know, on the one that he hit the safety, the hot climb, and, and Trent stopped on the route. And I, I asked him why, and he said, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not sure. And Cody let him in like he was going to come up over the top. And um, I don't know, he just he stopped on it. But I'm, I'm certainly not trying to blame, you know what I mean, Trent. But I don't think that one was on Cody. But y'all have been really executing in the middle of the field on third downs a lot thus far. Did they do anything defensively that kind of took that away from you? No. Um, you know, on third down, like I said, we had one. We had a busted route. We had two drops on third down. Um, they brought a pressure on one of them where he got hit. Uh, they did some things schematically that were, that were good, but uh, one of the things that we have the ability to do is putting a tight end in, solidifying an edge or a fullback, and I thought we shored those up. You know what I mean? I felt like that wasn't a problem the rest of the night, but we just weren't able to execute tonight. Like I said, I, I certainly don't take anything away from Northwestern because they made the plays they needed to make. And I thought they I thought they played they played an excellent football game. And like I told our team, they can't beat us without our help. And we certainly helped them tonight. Penalties are going to happen in mm -hmm. games, but how crucial were a few of them off the top of my head? Kenneth's touchdown, great play that he made. But no doubt. Offensive pass interference. Then you have Hunter Lee with a baseball sliding catch down to the two. You end up with a hold call. Goal, I believe, but a holding call brings it all the way back. Those two stood out to me. Yep. opinion on those. No, I mean, and then another, I mean, it seemed like after that hold on the, or the pass, offensive pass interference on the touchdown, I think we had two penalties after that because I think we called about thir three third and thirties. You know, I mean, it seemed like we were had forever to go, and I was just trying to get us back into field goal range at that point after the uh, touchdown was taken off the board for the offensive pass interference. But, you know, it's just, like I said, they were, they were costly. Um, I, I think we shot ourselves in the foot tonight. I mean, we certainly were our own worst enemy on offense. There's a defense you give up three points and 87 yards in the first half. You know, it, you can't say, man, they really had a letdown. You know, they had the, the let, you know what I mean, the letdown. You can't, I thought they competed, but then in the second half, uh, when they had to make a couple plays to get 20 yards, they were able to do it. But all three of those turnovers that led to points for them uh, occurred at our end of the field. You know, all three of them occurred at our end of the field, and it's just hard to put your defense in that bad a field position in the fourth quarter in a close football game. You know, even as bad as all the mistakes were and as bad as we played, if we hold on to the ball in the fourth quarter, if we catch a punt, you know what I mean, if we make the first down, um, you're not in that position. But we didn't. I mean, we, we, weren't able to, we weren't able to finish it. In hindsight, do you wish you may have gone to the Cody under center and Kenneth in the, in the eye earlier? No. Um, you know, I mean, I look at it and we just said, because in the third quarter, uh, we went right down the field and scored. When they scored to make it 13-10, um, we took the ball in one back and went right down the field and put the ball into the end zone. Uh, went down the field and scored. We didn't have a lot of plays in the third quarter because they, they put a couple drives together to score, and they, they did. We, we let them hang around. They got a lot of energy. They played with a lot of passion. They made some plays at the end that we weren't able to, we weren't able to make. But, um, no, I don't, I don't look back right now. I mean, I'm, when I watch a film, but I felt like we moved the ball tonight. You know, I didn't feel like moving the ball was the problem. I mean, we... Yeah, well, we had 400, 400 yards, 415 yards or whatever it was, but uh, and that's really without a big play. You know, we had a couple big play opportunities early. We missed them, uh, just couldn't execute on them. But, I mean, at the end, when I felt like with what they were doing, I didn't want to put anything at risk, and let's put the ball in Kenneth's hands. He's one of our best players, and that's, that was our mindset towards the end of the game. 
Was this almost like a perfect storm of everything going wrong at the end? And it seems like it, doesn't it? I mean, with three turnovers in the fourth quarter, uh, right there at the end, you know, you're in a you're in a one possession game. It's 13, you know, it's 13-10. We go down and field, score. It's 20-10. Then it's 20-17. And we go down field and score, it's 27. You know what I mean? We kept, offense kept answering uh, when they would go down and score. But then at the end, with three turnovers, I believe on the last three possessions, we had the ball. I believe it was the last three possessions we had the ball were turnovers in our end of the field that led to points to them. And you lose on the last second field goal. I guess where, where do you go from here? I know you always talk about the long term thing, mm -hmm. you know, you're not going to win a game or lose a game and go to the bowl or et cetera, right. et cetera. But right. I guess how do you rebound? You have Auburn next week. I'm sure you probably haven't even thought about it, but this has to be a little bit of a letdown with, with the oh. loss. And so how, how, do you, how do you go from here? I mean, you come back in, you watch the film tomorrow. As I told the team, we're not going to sit around and feel sorry for ourselves. Uh, we laid the egg. I mean, we, we, we were the ones that made the mistake. And I say we, coaches, players, we, we did it. I mean, we were the ones that, I said, they can't beat us without our help, and we certainly gave it to them tonight. And we have nobody to blame but ourselves. And, and what you do when things don't go right, you don't throw your arms up and say, I quit. Uh, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm going to take my ball and go home. You know what? You roll up your sleeves and say, what do we got to do to get it straight? What do we got to do to compete? As I, four games are gone. There's eight games left to go. I'm certainly, this game lost it tonight. We can't do anything to change that. We can't turn back the clock. We can't rewrite record books. We can't do any. That game's in the history. It's, it's part of our record at this point. All we can do is go forward, and we got to do what we can to put our best foot forward. An incredible challenge to go to Auburn uh, to go play in that football game, and we're going to have to go there. We're going to have to compete our tails off in that one, and then we come back home and we play UTEP at home. Uh, and I said, we're going to get through the first six games. We're going to take a deep breath, and we're going to see where we are. Until then, we're going to put our head down. We're going to grind like crazy and be as good as we can be. And, you know, we... We felt like we were making some strides and making some progress with the last couple wins, but um, this one hurts. You know, this one hurts because we certainly had our opportunities to win the game. With you saying that, you know, mentioned the last two games, disappointed at all that you come out and, and play like this after yes. the last two weeks? Yes, yes. I'm very, very, I mean, disappointed in the way we played. Um, disappointed as coaches, we couldn't get it done. And when I say, I continually say we, because I'm certainly not pointing any fingers at any players. As the head coach, I got to take responsibility for the way our team went out and played. And I felt like we tried to do everything we could. We talked to them about um, a football team. You first got to learn how to win. And then once you learn how to win, you got to learn how to handle winning. And learn how to handle winning is all of a sudden when you're the favorite, how competitive are you going to be? How determined are you going to be? How, how much are you going to roll up your sleeves with the resolve to go get it done? Um, and you know what? We weren't, able, we weren't able to get our focus where it needed to be to go out and make the plays we needed to make. But I don't think it was effort by this football team. I don't think it was a lack of effort. I think it was definitely a lack of execution. And as coaches, we got to look, we got to look at ourselves first. Just got to roll our sleeves up, come in here, watch the film, get better, correct the mistakes, and get ready for Auburn. Like you said with the favorite underdog, was, do you think that there's anything different? Just the fact that the first three games you're huge underdogs pretty much and you have the underdog mentality, then you come to this game, heavy favorites? I mean, nine penalties and five turnovers. We, I don't know that I, I'd have to look at it, but we probably have ten turnovers, I mean ten penalties in three games. And, is that what we have, 17? Okay, so we have 17. So we ha get, would dang near get half of that tonight. And then we have five turn. We have two turnovers in five games. I mean, in three games, we have five tonight. You know, we, we drop a punt. They have nothing to do with us catching a punt. You know what I mean? And Trent Taylor has done that all year. Uh, Kenneth hasn't had a fumble all year. I don't know how many carries he's had on the year, but he hasn't had a fumble all year, and he puts the ball on the ground. So it's just it's frustrating. It's certainly frustrating because we had our opportunities, um, but we made the mistakes that we had to make tonight to give them a chance to win. And, it's, and nobody hurts worse than Kenneth Dixon and Cody Sokol and Trent Taylor. And as a football team, hopefully the pain inside will give us the ability to get it together and, and come back tomorrow and go to work and say, what do we got to do to make sure that it doesn't happen again? We may lose another football game. I just don't want to lose a football game because we give it away. I have made this comment all year. And I mean, I keep saying we're a work in progress. We're a young football team. We're learning a lot about our team. We're still learning a lot about our team. We're learning about where we are. And we're going to learn how we're going to come back and how we're going to respond to adversity and whether we're going to stick our head in the sand or whether we're going to roll our sleeves up and compete.